If you speed up time, plants come alive, and this little violet begins the dance of life. And inside this plant, it holds a surprising secret. And they're edible. Mmm. But not all parts of every violet. And did you know that violets have a history tied to medicine, folklore, and danger? The sweet violet here has a disappearing scent. That's right. While at first you can smell its sweet fragrance, the ionone compounds you inhale momentarily desensitize your sense of smell, and the smell disappears. Thus in folklore, the violet was sometimes seen as a sign of fleeting love, like when Shakespeare used it in the tragedy of Hamlet. But not all violets are the same. I'm here in the eastern United States at the moment, and we have common blue violets like this growing all around me. Now these ones don't smell, so you don't have that vanishing smell. But you can still eat the flowers, and they actually taste really good. Yeah, those are, those are amazing. Yeah. No, it tastes pleasant. If you can identify a violet, then you're on your way to being able to eat them. Now that is important though, because you have to recognize this flower from other flowers. So let me show you the general form. If you look at the flower, there's gonna be five petals. Four of them face up, and one giant lobe-shaped one faces down. Now often on the back, if you can look at it in profile here, you can see a spur. That is very common for violets. I think these are one of the safest wild plants to eat. You can eat the flowers and you can eat the leaves. And I encourage this behavior as much as possible because all of a sudden there is a reason to interact and get to know the nature all around you. I try to get all the kids that I know to pick these violets and put them in their mouth and see what they taste like. This is a violet. And we know it's safe to eat one. I'll show you right here. Mmm, delicious. But I do not recommend eating all parts of the plant. You see, the roots and the seeds of most violets contain saponins, which, if you ingest them, can lead to vomiting, diarrhea, and it's not deadly toxic, but probably not something you want to put into your stomach. <laughs> now, if you're still with me, you might be like, hey, I kind of recognize that shape, but I'm not sure where else I've seen it. Chances are you recognize them from your local garden shop. All of these are different varieties of violets. Here's the history. In the 1700s and 1800s, flower enthusiasts in Europe took this plant, the wild violet, and started crossbreeding it with the yellow violet, the Siberian violet, and others. The goal was to get bigger flowers, unique colors, and long bloom times. They were successful too. Look at all the varieties. The pansy comes from the French pensi, meaning thought or remembrance, and that definitely fits how they were used. If you give someone a pansy, it means you're thinking about them. And it's for this reason that I love them too. I always plant pansies in my yard creates nice spring color. When I have the opportunity, I also plant these smaller flowered varieties. They're more closely related to the wild varieties. They smell often and they'll come back year after year and that's why they call them Johnny Jump Ups. But back to the secrets this plant has within it. You see, violets have medicinal compounds inside. Here's the top four. Methyl salicylate is a pain reliever and anti-inflammatory like aspirin. That's why it's used in herbal poultices for sore muscles and for headaches. Saponins are natural compounds that break down mucus and toxins, which is why violets have been used in syrups and teas to treat coughs, bronchitis, and colds. Alkaloids like violin have calming effects on the nervous system, which is why the tea is sometimes used to help with stress and anxiety. There is also some evidence that they may lower blood pressure by relaxing the blood vessels. Finally, cyclotides are compounds that seem to disrupt cancer cell membranes and thus are being studied for their potential anti-tumor properties in lab studies. This is promising, but still a new development. But like all things, these compounds vary between species of violet, so this is not a recommendation for you to go out and start harvesting pounds and pounds of violet leaves and flowers and start eating them. But I do recommend you start eating the flowers. Wait, is that a violet? That is, of course, if you can identify the toxic lookalikes. But before I get to that, I want to talk about something I use every day, and that is my nootropic magic mind. 
Magic Mind, which has been a sponsor of this series so graciously for the last year, has a new product. These are gummies. It has the same things as the Magic Mind shots, except they are caffeine free and they are good for all ages. Very nice. I can pack them with me. It has the same herbals that I would use on a daily basis anyway. Lion's Mane, Ashwagandha, Cordyceps, to name a couple. I found that those are very helpful for my cognition. So as I'm working throughout the day, it's just more of a calm flow state. Uh, these gummies also don't have caffeine, which is, which if you don't want to add caffeine, that's fantastic. Kids can take these. If you haven't tried these yet, I would recommend you give it a go. You can go down to the link right here, magicmind.com slash stoneagegm. And now back to violets and the toxic lookalikes. Now look at this. If these two flowers look somewhat similar to you to the violet, then maybe you should be careful. This flower is the deadly monk's hood, and this flower is the deadly delphinium. I will say they grow completely differently to the violet, and the plant looks nothing alike to me. But I understand that these flowers do look somewhat similar. The point is, if you are new to botany, maybe don't eat purple flowers until you can properly identify them. The good news is that violets and pansies are labeled in these stores. So you can pick up a container and then plant it and impress your friends when you eat the petals. Just don't die by mistaking a violet for other toxic purple flowers. Thanks everyone for joining in on this little discovery about this cool, amazing violet. I think we can learn a lot from violets. Part of it is to get out, explore the wild, look for these plants. You can become a gardener, you can become a forager, you can be a steward of this land. Because the more you get your hands dirty, the more you realize you are part of nature. Now, if you want to learn more, you could get Haley and I's book, Mother Nature's Not Trying to Kill You, or you could join our Patreon community where we release videos ahead of time so we can get some feedback from all of you. Haley, by the way, is behind the camera here. Or if you want to watch another video we made in a similar fashion, you could watch this video on daffodils. All right, we'll see you in the next one.